Hi everyone. So I've been doing some recent work with Super Collider. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's an object-oriented programming language for real-time audio synthesis. It's free and open source, developed by James McCartney, it runs on multiple operating systems, and it's extremely powerful. If you're into computer music or programming or better yet, both, then you should definitely check it out. I've made a few reverb effect synths recently, and I wanted to try coding an infinite hold reverb effect. And this was an idea I got from my friend and fellow programmer Scott Price, who coded the same thing in pure data. Now, churches and concert halls and similar buildings usually have very long reverberation times, but when sound waves strike a surface and bounce back, they lose some of their energy, and so the sound eventually vanishes. But with Super Collider, it's possible to simulate a scenario in which sound retains 100% of its energy upon reflection, so that the sound never decays, which in real life is pretty much impossible. So as you can imagine, infinite reverb is a pretty interesting and immersive effect. Now normally, uh, with built-in objects like um, Freeverb and uh, Freeverb 2, these guys right here, uh, and even with more basic reverberation methods like um, uh, using an all-pass filter, there's no explicit way to set the reverb feedback level to 100%. Uh, but there's a way around this. The local in and local out unit generators allow you to create feedback within a function or synth def, making it very simple to send output back into the synth. Uh, so here, uh, I have a very uh, simple bit of code. So first I declare my variables and I set the decay coefficient to 0 0.5. Uh, this really isn't a decay coefficient in the usual sense. It's more just a number by which I'm scaling the amplitude of the local output. So if this variable is between 0 and 0 0.5, then the sound will decay and ultimately disappear. If it's greater than 0 0.5, the sound will become louder and louder over time. And if you don't kill the audio, it'll destroy your speakers or do something else horrible, and you don't want that. But if it's set exactly to 0.5, the reverberation is held at a steady amplitude. Uh, so sound in uh, simply reads audio data through your computer's default input source. So that might be your internal microphone or an external mic if you've got one plugged in. I'm using an external. It's just a simple way of getting live audio. Uh, so now I'm setting local equal to the local input which is read from a local bus, which is specific to this function. So if I had other synths or other functions, they wouldn't be accessing this bus at all. And so the first thing I do is uh, add the input to the signal. That's this right here. Um, and on the first pass, this is just the input signal itself. And I'm using the uh, dupe message because I want stereo sound. And then here, uh, I'm actually applying the reverb effect. I'm using an all-pass filter and delaying the signal by a small random amount, somewhere between 0 and 0 0.5. Sorry, 0 0.05. And I'm iterating this process 15 times. So this effect is, is actually similar to what physically happens uh, to sound waves in real life when they bounce off surfaces. Uh, the sound tends to scatter in a reasonably random fashion. And then once I apply the reverb, I send the new audio back to the local input scaled by the decay coefficient. And then I have a separate out, uh, which actually sends the output to the computer's audio hardware so we can hear it. Um, and it sounds like this. So I have to do a hard stop to kill the audio because I haven't yet implemented any control architecture that would allow me to fade the sound in and out, but that's okay because this patch is really just for demonstration purposes. Uh, and I can change the decay argument of the all-pass filter as well, that's this one right here. Right now it's set to one second and that's long enough for the input to sort of smear together when the reverb is applied. But I can change it to something much smaller, like one hundredth. And um, uh, and the reverb-like sound will pretty much be gone, uh, but the synth will still be feeding back at 100%. So now we'll get these phase-like patterns, which I 
think are the result of my voice hitting the stereo mics at slightly different times, and this effect to me sort of reminds me of some of the early works of Steve Reich. <laughs> Anyway, you get the point. Um, and of course, if we take the decay coefficient down a bit, uh, then we have a much more traditional sounding reverb. So that's it anyway. Uh, I'm still learning the software myself, but I would definitely welcome any questions or comments you have. And I've made a few other Super Collider videos, so you can check those out as well. Um, that's it. So thanks, and see you later.